Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on today's Pirate. Today we're going to be debriefing our uh, flight uh, lesson number three. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy the video. Um, one thing, I wasn't able to record cockpit audio today. So um, instead of cockpit audio, you're going to have my narration throughout the uh, throughout the whole 50 minute or so. Um, one of the things that I will say right off the bat is uh, practicing frequently every other day at this point has uh, been very helpful for me, um, kind of cementing some of the, uh, some of the things that I've learned over the past uh, few days and uh, really building those, those muscle memories and those motor uh, muscles that I've never really used before uh, other than, you know, this and uh, in, in real life, my yoke isn't this thick. It's not this easily bounced back. Uh, my radios aren't right there and they're not quite as, uh, quite as bright and, and big. So it's just different in real life. And uh, one, of, one of the things that um, I learned today is going slow uh, and mentally preparing for the lesson before you start is a great, great way to uh, get as much as you can out of the out of the lesson. So, okay, so without further ado, uh, come fly with me and let's learn. Thanks, guys. Next year's over here. Uh huh. Carburetor heat. Car the Yep. Next to the uh, throttle is the carburetor heat okay. and the primer down here. If you want to prime it, that okay. usually helps it start like right off whenever okay. you give it a shot of primer. So you pull it out and you let it fill up with gas. You can feel the pressure whenever you're pushing on it, the fuel in there. Sometimes in the wintertime, I'll leave okay. it out and then I'll give it that shot when I'm starting it and it starts right up. Okay. You yep. leave it out when you start it or push it Just in? Just whenever it's cold. Yeah, okay. push it all the way in normally. Okay. But if you're having trouble getting it started, give it a shot while you're starting it. Okay. Yep. All right, so we've got mixture rich is all the way in. Yeah. Uh, carb heat in is cold. Ignition. Okay. Uh, prime, we prime. Yep, ignition. Ignition is on. Yep, all the way to the right. Okay. Yep, master is on. Good. Master is We can cool. turn the avionics off just till we start the okay. engine. Okay. Yep, look around there, make sure nobody's out there when you hit the starter. Okay, and then you Clear prop. Clear prop. That's it. Holding the brakes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, easy to start it up. Yeah. Yeah. Get it at 1200 RPM. Yeah, 800 to 1200 RPMs are just idle. That's what they're saying. Really. Okay. Yeah. And then make sure the oil pressure is coming up. So walking through the checklist, I uh, was able to uh, get everything situated, cameras, um, kneeboard, iPad, Century, kind of all that beforehand. I did the walk around uh, prior to the instructor getting there. So if at all possible, um, as you're going through your flight training, uh, get there before your flight training, probably 30 minutes before. Um, and if you can walk around your plane, um, even get in your plane before you get into it, uh, that's going to be very helpful. You know, find where the parking brake is, find where the lights are, study it, um, sit in, get your seat ready, um, kind of, kind of understand the layout of the plane before your instructor gets there. Because when your instructor gets there. Uh, it's going to be a wild amount of information right ahead. You heard right away it was uh, carb heat here, mixture here, 
master here, uh, turn the magnetos on, uh, and I was still on carb heat. Where is the carb heat? I know what it is. Um, I know what the, I know what mixture is. I know what each one of these are, but in in the simulator, it's different. Um, and so figuring out where each one of those buttons and knobs are within each of your uh, airplanes is going to be very very helpful. Um, okay, so we went through the startup checklist. Um, that checklist is you know very similar for most Cessna 172s. Uh, we go through uh, the pre-flight uh, routine. Um, and as we start, we look for a rich mixture of carb heat, it's cold. We look for prime. Um, you heard him talk through prime. We open the throttle a little bit. We turn the master on. We make sure our strobe lights are on. Uh, I did that in the pre-flight, actually. Uh, we call clear. We go through and turn our ignition on. We check the oil pressure. We do the engine warm-up is what we're doing here. Um, we're checking for... Um, uh, after that, we uh, <clears throat> I leaned up for taxi. Uh, we don't want to uh, have carbon build up on the uh, uh, spark plugs or in the cylinders for that. Um, and now before taxi, we're going to do a run up. Um, we're setting our lights. We're setting our transponders. We're setting uh, checking our flaps. Uh, we are um, obviously checking seat belts over and over again. Set our radios. Um, and then we are going to um, bring up the RPMs to 1700 and do the run up. Uh, we did it here right by the hangers. Um, you can do it really anywhere. Uh, you can do it right after you've already taxied and all of that. Um, my instructor likes to have it pre run up so we're not holding taxi or we're not holding taxiways or runways for anybody especially early in the morning when you've got business guys trying to take their jets out and uh, actually do some work and not just <laughs> learn how to fly. Um, so, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's, he's walking me through some emergency steps if my transponder's not working right now, uh, cycling it through. There's a test button on the transponder, so if the transponder's not uh, replying or if they ask me to squawk a certain... Uh, frequent or a certain number on my transponder and they don't see it, um, I can test it. Uh, I, I can cycle it, turn it off, back on. Um, if neither of those works, then I've got a problem with the transponder um, and we need to kind of walk through uh, that after we land. Uh, I'm going through very, very uh, line by line on the um, on the checklist, and so right now I was just looking for the fuel selector valve. Uh, in in the game, it's by my feet. In in this Cessna, uh, it's a 1959, I believe. Uh, this Cessna, it's actually between him and I, um, and it's about the size of my hand to get down there. Um, okay, so uh, check to make sure it was on both, and he was walking me through um, why you check through that, especially if you if you never change it during flight. Um, if you've got passengers back there, uh, he's had passengers kick it off before. Uh, that would be terrible to have it go completely off. Um, okay, so uh, now we're setting the uh, we're setting the RPMs to 1700s. We're going to walk through the magneto check and bring each one, uh, turn one magneto off. You should see about a 100 RPM drop. And uh, then uh, I didn't know why you did this, but you actually bring it all the way back to idle to make sure it does idle. walking me through right now the heading indicator um, we don't really need that with this particular plane because he's got the G5 here that uh, shows you exactly where your heading is uh, there's really no bug to, to that you need to set 
he's setting the altimeter, which we already set, so he's kind of walking back and forth through how you would set that with the, with the knob there. Um, and so now, now that we've got all of that set, uh, we're ready to begin uh, getting ready to taxi. And so from here, we could call here. I've actually heard planes call while I was listening to the uh, frequency. I've, I've heard planes uh, call right here for a taxi to uh, taxi to the runway. He actually likes to ta uh, call for taxi once he gets to the taxiway because this is technically an uncontrolled piece of the airport right now. Uh, so you technically don't need to. So he likes to wait till he gets to the very end. Um, one of the cool things about this third being my third lesson, um, I was able to uh, call uh, once we get up here and stop them, I'm, I'm able to call uh, for a taxi to the runway. Uh, I already had my weather. Um, he uh, gave me the altimeter, and uh, the altimeter was actually different than what the weather gave me you know, one minute earlier. So either something had changed or uh, the, the bar uh, barometric pressure that he's reading is different from the automated weather information system. And so. I'm calling here, uh, asking for uh, 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 eastbound departure. I am at the the South Hangers, uh, looking for an eastbound departure. And he comes back with taxi via Alpha to runway 18. Uh, here's your altimeter. I read back the wrong altimeter because I was thinking, um, I was thinking about what the weather, the AWOS gave me, and not what he gave me. And so he came back on and corrected me. Uh, Cool. Okay, so now we're going to taxi. Um, got to keep reminding myself over and over and over again. Um, follow that yellow line and drive with your feet. Drive with your feet. Um, it's it's decently easy to drive with your feet on the first uh, the first go round. You know, as you're getting up in the morning or you know heading out. I haven't. I haven't been flying yet, and so uh, I'm not using the yoke. So it's not, you know, second nature to me. It doesn't look like a steering wheel. It's not uh, a Tesla yoke, so that's good. Uh, or I don't drive a Tesla yoke, so that's good. But so, um, yeah, it's it's pretty easy because I don't have the the hour long habit of you know death gripping the yoke for survival purposes. Um, but a as you can see later on in the the video um, as we do land and when we do land there's uh, more of a tendency of, tendency of me to try to grab that yoke and steer uh, with my hands rather than my feet um, and so here well, uh, what he's telling me is he he knows that this uh, twin engine up up ahead on the Bravo taxiway across the runway is going to cut in front of us he knows the tower is going to give them uh, clearance before us because they're faster it just makes sense for that um, and so he's telling me to slow down um, he's ahead of the airplane he's even ahead of what the air traffic controller is going to tell him um, that is one of the the key things that I'm learning is uh, when you when you think about getting ahead of the airplane um, it's not just the airplane it's it's your environment get ahead get ahead of where you're going to be in five miles, where you're going to be in the next 100 yards, what's going to happen. That plane's going to have to cross the runway. And as it crosses the runway, uh, it's most likely going to be in front of us because uh, it's faster and the ATC is going to want them to go first. And so he's having me slow down because that, yes, that call did come. And um, when that call came, it was basically uh, Cessna 172, go ahead and... Um, or actually Cessna 170 don't go ahead uh, make way for that twin engine I can't remember what it was and so uh, we let them go and um, we just slowly taxied uh, let them gain some speed get out of the way I'm asking him here what is my visual reference uh, what, what kind of separation do I need between them and he said in a morning like this where it's just me and him uh, you can leave as much space as possible. If there's people behind me, I don't want to be, you know, turtle turtle walking it and slowing everybody down. Um, and I don't want to be, you know, right on his butt and kind of cramping him as well. But uh, for the purposes of today, I can just give him as much space as possible. Let us walk um, slowly down the taxiway and um, 
then when we get to the the whole short line, uh, he'll have plenty of space. He'll probably already be departed, and we can just get up and go. Um, and so as you see, he's he's getting ready to go. He's gone. Um, he's about to take off and lift off. And so, um, yeah, I guess um, the, the key to that is even on a taxiway, you want to be ahead of the airplane. Um, I always kind of thought, well, you want to be ahead of the airplane as you're flying. You want to know emergency spots to land. You want to know all of that. But it's even on the taxiway. You, you always want to be ahead of the airplane. And that's something uh, to get used to um, in terms of, you know, why we do checklists, why we do all of that. And so um, now you see he he's looking. He's looking for traffic. Um, I'm calling for uh, I'm, we're holding short runway 18. Um, shutting all the windows. I did not look at my uh, checklist for that, so uh, that wasn't a mental checklist either. It was just, oh, I, I know I should close this, and it needs to be closed. So uh, for me, uh, I need I need a hold short checklist. I need a run up checklist. And uh, one of the things that Gary, my flight instructor, is letting me know is that those checklists need to be ingrained in memory uh, and, and those checklists change for every airplane as well and so if I'm in a different Cessna 172, a newer one with different avionics, with different switches uh, with uh, with strobes and, and beacons and nav and uh, taxiway lights, this one doesn't have taxiway lights, uh, it's going to have completely different uh, checklists and this one doesn't have a um, this one doesn't have any parking brake either. Uh, well, it does, but it doesn't stay in. It's not one of the, the handles. Um, okay, and so now uh, I am, I've learned on YouTube that a, a slow push into full throttle uh, is e more easily manageable. And so you can see here, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly capable at managing a center line while on the runway. Uh, and I, as, a, as I got going about 45 knots, I started feeling the urge to pull up, um, and that that wasn't quite necessary. So I uh, had to kind of let let go and let it get up to 60, which is the v rotate for this particular airplane. Um, as I got up to 60, that's when I started pulling up. And I want to I want to keep pulling, uh, but uh, my instructor here is telling me uh, ground effect is real. Uh, you want to get out of ground effect and then go up to climbing uh, climbing speed. And so uh, climbing speed for this particular aircraft is 70 to 85 and uh, really in 75 to 85 in there. Um, 91, he said, is the best uh, rate of climb or, or the best, yeah, the best rate of climb for a given time. Uh, but him knowing this uh, aircraft for so long, I, I, he thinks it's more like 85. So uh, I'm going to go with the guy who kind of lives and breathes in this aircraft. Um, so we're, we're slowly climbing. Uh, we're going to get to 700-ish, uh, 800-ish uh, feet above, uh, above the ground. And we're going to start to make a 90-degree turn uh, out towards the practice area. And so uh, we're going to ease off on this practice area and he's letting me know to keep that steady rate of climb is right in the 75 85 miles per hour uh, and if you can see uh, you there's the uh, the gauges down there to the bottom left I added those gauges uh, so hopefully every video from now on will have the gauges so you can kind of see how fast we're going um, our course of takeoff course of landing uh, any of the maneuvers that I make, you'll be able to kind of see the, the right, uh, the headings as well. Um, getting a little fast here, because uh, I'm starting to level off, uh, and so what I'm doing is trying to finesse this throttle, and then it's it's interesting, there's a lot of play uh, at the very end of the throttle, uh, to where I can pull it out four inches and really nothing happens, uh, but after I pull out you know, half an inch, once that four inch is done, um, I lose quite a bit of speed. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of getting to know your throttle as well. And that's, uh, 
I guess it's very very much like learning a new car. You know, every every accelerator is going to be a little bit different. And so for today, he's telling me that our uh, our maneuver altitude is going to be 2,500 feet. And really, my goal uh, when he tells me that is to trim and keep trimmed and stay within that 2,500 feet. And for the most part, uh, I was within 300 feet of it all, at all times. Uh, maybe. T- 200 feet of it at all times, but um, I'd like to get better at um, judging when to bring that altitude, uh, uh, when we're going to reach that altitude, and when to trim off. Uh, So I trimmed off too late, uh, and now I'm trying to go back down to 2,500 because I'm a stickler for rules. He told me 2,500, I'm going to stick there. (coughs) Uh, Okay, so... Uh, he's going to walk me through our first uh, maneuver. It's going to be an S-turn uh, around a straight line. And um, having gone through the test, I know what an S-turn is. I know what the letter S is, but um, I've never experienced it before. So I'm not quite sure I understand what he's talking about when he says keep a heading of uh, zero or 360. Um I didn't know that you begin turning the moment you cross the line either. I I thought you kind of had the choice to make the S however large you wanted to make it and just keep going from there. So um, now that we've leveled off, uh, he set the steam gauge to what our GPS is showing uh, right at 2,500 feet. And um, yeah, so now we're going to begin our turn to the north. And once we cross that threshold is when the S, S turn starts. Um, I, I didn't quite know what he means for that. Um, so I kind of kept going after we crossed the threshold. And he was like, no, you got to turn. It's the S turn. Um, and so we're about to uh, head into our uh, maneuver course. And this is just a, a normal, regular turn here. Um, for me, it's it's getting a little easier to make a steeper turn. For me, 10 to 15 degrees feels steep. I know I know it's a shallow uh, in the testing material and aeronautical books, but uh, it feels steep. Uh, and so it's starting to feel less steep as we go. Um, and we ha- I have never gone through steep turns. So we're about to pass this road, and this road is where the S turn should start. Um, yeah, you can see down there in the bottom camera. Um, I feel like we're already past the road, but now we start turning. And as we start turning, I don't really know the goal here. Um, I didn't know the goal was to make kind of a semicircle and get back to the the road. Uh, and I didn't know that the goal was to get back to the road at 180 degrees of where I entered the turn um it 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 makes sense thinking about it uh from a uh, a heading perspective i just didn't get that and so you can kind of see here from the uh the map graph i kind of had to turn harder to the right to get back to that 180 and uh, i believe he actually pulls yeah so i'm i'm trying to even up at 160 and he's like no 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 get back to 180 um okay so that was, uh, that was the first part of the uh, first S. And so now we're crossing the second, uh, we're crossing the uh, road the second time. And now I kind of understand, okay, I'm here to uh, start the turn at the, uh, at the road. And depending on my speed, it, it's gonna depend, it's gonna determine my bank as well. And so here, uh, I feel like this S turn is going, or this part of the S turn is going better because I'm starting to understand the maneuver a little more. Um, getting back to 180 degrees of where I entered that turn, which was 180. So 180 minus 80, or 180 is zero. So I should be right at zero, AKA 360, when I um, cross the road now. Uh, and this isn't a fully straight road. So uh, we're kind of imagining that it's straight. Um, and so when I pass this, I'm looking out the side to see if I pass it. I passed it, now I'm gonna start my turn. 
Um, and as you can see on the map, um, this piece of the turn should be steeper. Uh, I, I think for some reason my my first part of the S's are more uh, more shallow because I'm not quite you know rounding off that top S. And so, uh, all right, I see I see 180 coming up, so I'm starting to straighten out a little bit and got the attitude indicator straight and as I cross I'm right at 180 so a um, little little better on that one uh, and as you can see from the the map it's definitely uh, a, a better looking s for sure it's it's not it's not a smaller s all right so cross the road time to start the next piece of the s and start that bank um, I'm getting a better feel for banks as well. I completely understand why they teach these maneuvers. Um, it helps you get in touch with the airplane. Um, the good thing is I'm keeping my altitude mostly within 100 feet uh, during this maneuver, so that's that's very helpful, uh, very promising as well. All right, and yeah, so I, I'm 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 feeling how how shallow and how steep the turn needs to be to get to my my next point of the S turn uh, at the heading that I need to be at when I cross that road. All right, so now we're looking for a point to turn around. Um, and he's explaining to me that <coughs> my, my point that I'm going to be turning around, I want to stay about a mile away from that point and just make a, uh, a continuous circle around that point. Um, and so uh, he's showing me uh, what a, about what a mile looks like from the air. Because I have no idea. I know what a mile looks like from uh, running track. It's four times around a track, but I can't lay all four of those uh, down and you know remember what those look like. So from our perspective in the air, it's um, it's helpful to know. Okay, here's what uh, one mile looks like. And so what he's having me do is he's having me start at. Um, at a point and my finish needs to be at that point pointed in the same direction and so I'm pointed at zero degrees uh, my finish is going to be at this uh, location pointed at zero degrees and so um, I'm just staring at this point uh, I'm staring at my my center point and he's he's saying you can stare but you also need to make sure you focus at where your next point should be that you're going to fly over which is a mile away that's more helpful than staring uh, he says as people continue to stare uh, what they do is they, they end up making tighter and tighter spirals uh, because they're you know like like you're in a car you're you're going to drive to where you are looking uh, and people do the same thing as they stare at this the center point they are going to uh, eventually make a tighter and tighter spiral into the center point. Um, and so you can kind of see here where I'm looking um, is, is banking me a little farther left than I need to be. There's hardly any wind here. And so um, I should be probably another 200 yards to the right here. And you can see, yeah, I'm, I'm forcing myself to, to look at that from a, a right perspective. Um, so yeah, um, I will, I'll let you guys watch the, the next, um, uh, half of this turnaround a point as well as the second turnaround a point. And then we will catch back up with you after that.
All right, yeah, so what he told me is uh, your maneuver is not finished until you start at zero and you finish at zero. So you're going to eventually, during that turnaround of point, hit all 360 degrees of that uh, of that heading bug. So, yeah, um, I mean, those are the two main maneuvers that we did today. Like I said, being ahead of the airplane, uh, this instructor knows that we're going to be landing on runway 18 so we're going to be landing uh, facing south and what he's doing is he's positioning us uh, without me even knowing it i'm just you know thinking we we're flying straight straight and level okay i'm practicing my straight and level but he's positioning us for our approach back into the uh, the tower uh, so yeah um, always be thinking about where you're going and why you're going i just think we're training He's got a reason um, for for put, putting us there. So now we're starting to head back. Or well, once we finish this turn, he's going to point out where our home airport is. We're about 12 miles out, and um, I'm getting a better feel for distance at this altitude, as well as um, my home airport, or what will eventually become my home airport. Airport. Last time. He walked me through, okay, you see that ridge over there and see those towers? And I said, no, I don't. I don't see anything. Um, I don't see an airport. I don't, it, it all it looks like gibbledy garbage to me. But now today I see the ridges um, and I'm pointing towards the ridges. Um, we're going to call ATC and ATC is going to tell us to go uh, come in at, uh, at a left base, come in at base and um, report a three mile final. Um, and so here he's saying, okay, we're going to be coming in at a uh, left base. And so um, he's saying, since we're gonna be coming in at a base, we need to start angling for that base. Um, and since that ridge is there, we could fly right over the ridge and, and do a, a typical uh, one to two mile base. But uh, since they've called a three mile final uh, or called a, and told us to report three mile final. Um, it just makes sense for us to do our base leg a little bit farther out. Uh, and so he's he's kind of explaining to me where that three miles is. I could see the airport or you know the towers from the airport. I could see the field at that point. Uh, but he's he's showing me you know we're ten miles out. This is what the uh, this is what about a three mile base looks like, um, or a three mile final and angling towards that. And so uh, getting a good judge of, uh, a good practice at judging distance from this altitude. And now 
what um, what I need to start thinking about right now since we've we've made that decision is okay I need to be at pattern altitude at that three mile base uh, pattern altitude is uh, 2400 feet so I don't have to uh, I don't have to descend very much uh, but if I were higher here's where I would start descending and so um, as long as as long as I'm around 2300 2400 uh, I should be okay and so I do need to lose some altitude but not not terribly too much um, uh, eventually here he's going to um, point out what the vortex looks like for my uh, particular region and that's pretty cool uh, so now I, I can see a, a little bowling pin uh, out there in the distance and that little bowling pin is the vortex uh, and uh, I've got you know four or five flights under my belt on the simulator with a uh, vortex navigation or VOR navigation and so um, he's gonna walk me through you know doing that in this plane uh, what the frequency looks like, how to set the OBS, and um, you know, walk me through the the from and the to and things like that. So, yeah, just uh, cruising right now, uh, headed towards the, headed towards that uh, three mile final. So yeah, here here's where he sets the uh, the VOR frequency. You can see the VOR bug turn, and now we're gonna uh, he's gonna show me how to find the radial that I'm on for the VOR or for the vortex, and so that's the that's the radial that I'm on. So rather than navigating to the VOR, uh, VOR from uh, point to point like I've been doing in the simulator um, he showed me how to find where where I'm pointed right now um, okay so I've I've descended about a hundred feet I'm ready to start my turn into final and here's where we're gonna call uh, call the tower let them know we are uh, three miles and tower is going to clear us for landing. And it's interesting, um, tower cleared us for landing here, um, and there was actually somebody on the runway taking off. So um, it, it's it's very it's very interesting to see the uh, see the airfield and know that it's so far away. But also see the airfield in in that zoom hyper vision that I'm gonna so solely focus on this airfield, and uh, that that focus is going to make it seem closer than it really is. And that airplane seemed very close, uh, even though it was going to be at least four, three, four, five miles away by the time we touch down. So, yeah, um, ATC knows what they're doing. Instructors knows what they're doing. Um, and it's hard to get out of that mindset of uh, you know what you're doing because you've done it in a simulator or you think it should be right. Um, so for me, it helps to just take it in. Um, and so first notch of flaps comes up about, what, two miles from the runway. Um, now here, I'm just, I'm just focused on centering my plane with that runway um, and apparently my center is off I don't know if I'm cross-eyed or what but um, my center wants to be left and uh, you'll see later as we get closer to landing we are going to um, we're going to have to adjust to the right a little bit um, so there goes the second notch of flaps and speed still good at 80 
Uh, but now speed starts slowing way down, so we got to speed up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I don't think you can see the glides uh, or the um, Pappy lights here. Uh, they they're all white, so I'm I'm too high. Um, and for me, it's wow. From the camera, you can really tell I am left. But from my perspective, sitting in my seat, it does not feel left. Um, interesting. Okay. I've, I've actually never seen that from the camera point of view. Um, okay, so um, trying to capture the, the lights, and it's for me, it is hard to point down. Um, I'm flying perfectly fine up here in the, the nice air with no wind, no turbulence, everything's wonderful. I'm safe, there's no reason to jeopardize that safety and point my aircraft down. Um, I, I guess it's just a survival mechanism for me. Um, so you can actually kind of see me pull back a little bit there, um, rather than push power forward. Um, I'm just scared to point downwards, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, now he's kind of giving me that right, that adjustment to the right. And so now, um, also letting me know I want to be 80 right here. Uh, a little, little. I want to be a little faster. I want to be 70 at the numbers and 60 at touchdown. Um, all right. So uh, since we were a little high, we had to shut shut it down a little bit. All right. And so now we are going to. Here we go. 70 at the numbers. This guy is just. He's done this before a few times. Um, and we're going to slowly come down. And here, we are. Gonna squeal the tires a little bit. I've done that a few times in my simulator experience. So before he's even clear of the runway, he's asking for permission to go back and do a pattern work. Um, I guess that as you get good, you'll you'll and as you get comfortable with it, you'll you'll feel good about that. Me, I'd much rather go go past. Do my uh, do my flaps, get everything back to takeoff, and then uh, call for that pattern work. But um, yeah, so one of the things that I didn't do on my on that first landing was uh, go through that landing checklist. Uh, really need to burn that into memory. I didn't do it last night in the simulator. I didn't do it either time in the pattern today. And so really need to burn that into my memory. Landing checklist. Uh, I need seatbelt secure, fuel selector both, mixture rich, carb, heat, uh, cold, uh, flaps as desired, and then I want uh, my airspeed 70 over the numbers, uh, 80 going in, 70 over the numbers. So I've just got to burn that into memory. Seatbelt secure, fuel selector both, mixture rich, carb, heat, cold. All right, um, so here I pushed faster uh, into the throttle and had a little bit more of a squirrely time keeping it centered. Uh, kind of just like the simulator. So I, I really prefer the method of slowing into it. Um, I'm uh, At this point, I'm not really looking forward to a short field takeoff. Uh, doing better with the ground effect here. I uh, wanted to keep it, keep it lower for as long as I could before I was past that. Um, Pass that ground effect and then bring it up so I didn't lose that speed. Okay, so here this is just going to be a typical pattern. Um, I guess one of the good things, uh, looking about the, looking at this from the camera's point of view, it feels like he's helping a lot uh, while I'm landing, but it doesn't look like he's helping too much. So um, it might be a confidence thing or what, but. Um, I, I, it looks like I'm doing most of the, the work doing the landings, so that's that's a uh, that's a positive uh, positive thing to see from this perspective. So cool, um, yeah. Typical pattern here. I want to get 700, 800 above uh, above ele uh, airport elevation. Start my left turn. Nothing really remarkable about this pattern. It was. Uh, very much just a typical pattern, no extensions of downwind, none of that. Um, yeah, this, uh, I don't, I think it might be because I'm still a little bit lean 
uh, and I never fully leaned out and did my check uh, my my checklist. But uh, I didn't climb to two. I didn't climb to a thousand above. Uh, I didn't climb to pattern altitude uh, as fast as I normally do with these patterns. So that was interesting uh, for me. Uh, and so now, now I'm at a good speed. I'm coming up on pattern altitude, ready to, to bank uh, here and uh, start my downwind. Uh, and one thing. Uh, I've been the first time I did patterns I reported midfield every time ATC tower wanted me to um, and every single time in the simulator pilot edge wants me to report midfield they did not ask me to do that this time um, and so what um, what my instructor is going to tell me now is if they don't tell you to report midfield you're not cleared to land um, but you, you're also uh, not to just extend your downwind forever. And so what you're supposed to do is call your base uh, and let them clear, to, clear you to land at your base. And so here, I'm trying to keep the, uh, the runway just you know, right, right at that level of the, the beam, uh, basically where the camera is right now. And... Um, <clears throat> Keep, keep a straight line and uh, I notice I think right about here I notice I'm a bit high and I think I even say it to him um, and he says usually on this pattern uh, on this uh, left hand pattern uh, from runway 18 people are a bit high right here because there's towers right below it and um, I, I think people get a little a little afraid of those towers um, I feel like probably I was uh, aware of that as well um, and not just randomly climbing hundreds of feet <laughs> um, okay so now we're about 40 uh, probably 35 uh, coming to 45 of uh, of the runway so you'll see he, he's going to call base here in just a second after he tells me to turn so yeah, he's calling our base right here, and they're clearing us to land. Um, he actually cleared us for the option, um, so he said, um, he said uh, Skyhawk 6487 Bravo cleared for the option, and we replied back, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're full stop. So I can't remember how he said that, but um, it's always good. Um, to let the tower know what you're going to do um, so they know that you're going to take a little bit longer on the runway than um, than a, an option or a touch and go or a go around would be just so just in case somebody was coming behind me on a uh, an approach or something like that it's always good to let them know you'll be full stop on this one and so this one he um, he's going to let me know to not worry about landing it so much right on the numbers and uh, try to keep it above the runway and uh, float float out as long as I can. Um, and so I wasn't quite looking at my my runway uh, as I turned. So you see, I, I actually went a bit too far. And he's telling me that people try to course correct too quickly, uh, and that's what causes uh, a lot of accidents on on final is trying to course correct from. Uh, turning too wide of a base um, and so he said you've got plenty of time to just get straight and then correct a little bit as, as you go rather than make one big massive movement um, at a slower airspeed so we got the first line of flaps uh, we've got 20 in flaps I believe um, and now I'm trying to keep that 80 I want to keep 80 um, to 85 and so I'm, I'm feeling up oh, I'm trying to trying to pull up and you see my my speed drop a little bit because I'm pulling up, so I need to I need to push in. I can see here, and I, I can see why he keeps telling me to push in. Or, uh, I got a bit slow. <clears throat> okay, so now here I'm I'm learning to be a little more right, but he's still he's still nudging me right here. All right, so now I'm. Uh, 
I'm at 80, I'm good. Uh, I want to come down and yep, I want my airspeed at 70. Alright, that wasn't a bad landing. I don't think he helped too much on that. Um, Alright, so yeah. Um, I think that's it for today's debrief, y'all. Uh, we did some two S turns. We did two turns around a point. We did uh, an approach. Uh, we did some pattern work. And uh, if you can see, I've got some cool gauges and a map for you guys to follow along as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And let me know in the comments if you have any uh, anything you want to see in this channel or uh, if you have similar experiences on lesson number three. Thanks for joining, everybody. Heat off, landing lights off. Uh -huh. I started to say that. Yeah. That's it.